Assalamualaikum. My name is Nur Hasnina binti Hatta. Okay, today I'm going to talk about soil salinization. Okay, what is mean by soil salinization? Okay, to be simple, salinization is the noun for the salinity. Okay, the things that related to the salinity is of course salt. So the soil salinization is the accumulations of the soluble salts such as sodium, magnesium and calcium that in the soil to extend that soil fertility is severely reduced so this is what i mean by the soil salinization okay now i will tell you how soil salinization become a problem to us okay let's see there i will draw you some drawing of mine which is this is a small tree yeah this is a tree yeah and then this is land on the soil yeah okay let's draw some with the blue colors which is hose or a pipe that draws the waters from the waterways because the what the larger the water that can be placed on the land so the larger the yield and the water is from the waterways or the aquifers okay even if it is fresh water but in there may contain some salt also so the water and the salt so may be absorbed by the soil and then some of them will be uptake by the plants and the water will be evaporated through the process of transpiration so the things that are the elements that only evaporate through the transpirations are water the water only but the salt are left behind okay now the another uh, and uh, in the additions, the suns that beating the land also give another effect because the waters will be evaporates and left the salt behind. So everything's uh, so the every uh, so any water will be evaporates and left salt behind. So another double we making that underneath the soil there are a water table okay the water table also contains some salt in there and the same goes the same things also happen like the waterways the water from the waterways which is the water will be evaporates and the salt will be left behind so it will increase the salinity of the soil so, so I let's continue with the detailed information about the soil salinization. Okay. As you can see here in this picture, this is the land that be abandoned by the farmers because it can no longer grow the crops. So the farmers need to find a new land to grow the crops. So I already explained why soil salinization is a problem to us because the high salinity of the soils cannot don't grow the crops and it reduces the fertility. Okay, now I will continue to explain how salinity affects the plant groups. There are three, which are the osmotic potential, the specific plant effects, and also the soil ingredient. So I will explain one by one on how they affect plant groups. So we go to the first one is in osmotic potentials. It will cause the high osmotic pressure of the soil solutions how and why this is due to the presence of the soil results that like i mentioned just now that the soil solution is the accumulation of the soluble salts such as calcium sodium or magnesium in the soil so due to the presence of the soluble salts it will increase the osmotic potentials and hence decrease the water availability okay this is because the high osmotic potentials for roots find difficulty in absorbing high quantity of water. So it will cause the high osmotic pressure of the soil solution. So and then it will also the osmotic also affect the increases the potential forces that hold the water in the soil and make it difficult for plants to extract the water. Especially during the dry periods where there is lack of water. Salt in soil solutions may be concentrated and as clear plants by pulling water from them, which is in the process as osmosis. 
Okay, and finally, due to the high salt concentrations, concentrations, the plant have to spend more energy, especially the small quantity of the energy is left for the growth and functions or the other process like the leaves become deep green colors or the cells become placid. So, they waste the energy. And then the specific iron effect. If the growth situation is due to the excessive concentration of a specific ion rather than the osmotic effects alone, it is called as a specific ion toxicity. At a low concentration such as NaHCO3 and the soluble rates, it becomes toxic to it. But at high concentrations, salt ion have a toxic effects too, such as the in the fruit plants, it can tolerate the sufficient sufficient amount of the SO4 to minus but not chlorine because it is sensitive but in flats and in grasses it is sensitive to the high concentration of SO4 to minus and then lastly for the effects on the plant growth is the nutritional imbalance such as HCO3 induced ferrum deficiency sodium induced calcium deficiency and also magnesium induced calcium deficiency in this sodium, calcium, or magnesium, they will replace the calcium for the membrane and rendering them non functionally. So, these are all the effects of the uh, in the plant growth. Okay, and then lastly, we are going to the management strategies. In the soil management, we need to the maintenance of the satisfactory fertility levels, pH, and the structure of the soil. Because it's to encourage growth of the high yielding crop. So, with this maintenance of the satisfactory fertility levels, pH, and the structure of soil, it will lead to the, it will encourage the growth of the yield. And then, the maximization of the soil surface cover. For example, the use of the multiple crop species. And, and then the mulching. Okay, as you can see in this picture, this is what we call mulching because mulching we need to cover the soil surface with the mulch or the material mulch is, mulch is the material that we cover in the soil surface uh, it's called mulch so the process is called mulching because it helps to retain the soil moisture and reduce erosion and then the crop selections also example the use of deep rooted plants to maximize the water extractions and you uh, lastly, using a crop the rotations because it will minimum the pH and the minimum fallow periods. Okay. And last and finally, we're going to the water management. So, the water management, they are firstly it can be efficient irrigations of the crops, soil moisture, monitoring, and the accurate determination of the water requirements. And the choices choice of the appropriate drainage according to the situation. So as you can see in this picture, this is a bio drainage, which is the combinations of the transpiration, transportation, and absorption is equal to bio drainage. So this is an example of the drainage, which is surface drainage, subsurface drainage, or the bio drainage. So the efficient, the most efficient is the bio drainage. And then finally is Adequate disposals, disposals of the drainage water to avoid contamination of resident waters and the environment. So, I think that's all for me. I hope you guys enjoy watching my videos. Thank you for listening and watching. Bye!